Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. I am making a mess over here, sanding down this body. This was the Les Paul that I did uh, striping on, and I didn't like the striping. So I stripped the body down. I stripped the body down just a little bit more. I took off some a little bit of wood over here. Reason being is because I've got a different plan for this, and I got a different neck. Neck fits in the pocket just fine, lines up perfectly in the center, and uh, yeah. So, one of the things I have to do right now is I got to fill these pockets up, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the epoxy resin that I mixed up and just kind of fill this up to where it slightly bubbles over the edge not go over the edge, but bubbles. And if you've ever like played with water and glasses and stuff like that, you can kind of add. A little bit more water to a glass and it'll form like a dome over the top of from edge to edge and without spilling over so that's what I want to do with this since the epoxy resin is a little bit thicker than water uh, I should be able to build up a dome reason being is because I need a surface to sand flush this pockets going away this one will be reef cut what I ended up doing is I got my stew Mac router jig over here for uh, humbuckers and as you can see here this side here is wider than this side here well I want them both to match so what I'm going to end up doing is filling this up got my epoxy already mixed up over here and I don't care about the bubbles or anything else because you're not going to see this anyways so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour this in filling up the cavity Well, I start to see it kind of float to the top. I may have to level off the body a little bit to get this to go right. And I'm not worried about shrinking on this. There you go. That's kind of hitting the top a little bit on this side. So I am going to have to kind of wedge something underneath here to kind of even this out a little bit not by much there you go that seems to be better let's fill this one up a little bit here too I am starting to get that dome over body get out of here so let me take my torch up some of the bubbles I'm going to pour a little bit more inside here If it starts to go over the edge, I'm not worried or too concerned about that because, like I said, it's going to be sanded flush. And I kind of want this to soak into soak into the wood a little bit as well, so it makes a good bond. Usually if I would do something like a filling in a cavity, I would drill holes going on to each angle and I would put uh, either a toothpick or some type of piece of wood inside there. Kind of like what they do with concrete with the rebar to just enforce and make that, those two pieces become one. Alright, I think that one's had enough. Had enough to so I'm gonna let that cure <clears throat> probably overnight 
considering the thicker this stuff is, the faster it cures. And then I'll end up sanding one of them, well actually I'll sand both of them down. Now I'm not worried about the hole that has to go from the control cavity over here. I'm not worried about that. I'll end up redrilling a new one. Uh, I'm actually going to make the control cavity over here smaller because I don't need this big of an area over here for a control cavity if there's just going to be a volume and possibly a tone. Um, there's no good the three-way switch and everything over here has already been sealed. I got something that's going to go over the body of this guitar and this will be the first time that I'm going to end up doing this. But uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. And I'm going to let this set up and I'll be back a little bit later. All right, so it hasn't been quite 24 hours just yet, but the epoxy resin is pretty much cured. It's a little bit on the rubbery side around the edges over here, which that's telling me that it's not fully cured to be able to sand this. So I have to wait. Um, it's, it recommends waiting at least three days, but uh, I can get away with like waiting a day and a half or so when I'm doing something like this. And the nice thing about even though this epoxy resin is not made for deep pores and a deep pore is something when you have like something deep cavity you know something that you're got to fill in that that's you know a couple inches deep or you know something like that that type of epoxy resin basically is a lot thinner and the reason being is it helps the air bubbles to come up to the surface a lot quicker to where you have a nice if you're doing like some type of a, um, a mold pour or something you use the deep pour epoxy and you'll have a nice you know whatever figure that you have from the mold without having a bunch of bubbles in it and shit. This stuff here, if you try to do a deep pour with it in a mold or something, you are going to, chances are, have some bubbles in it. And, you know, that's this stuff is just a little bit thicker. That's why it's just made for pouring on top of surfaces, not filling surfaces. So what I got going on over here is I'm going to wait the sand. I don't want to have any corn rolls and what a corn roll is is when uh, whatever your finish is or whatever you're trying to sand it ends up uh, making this little rolled you know kind of like a, a worm almost looks like it's kind of long. It's the material that is being uh, removed from sanding, sandpaper or whatever and it kind of makes like a, a corn roll is what they call it. So I'm going to wait with that, but the whole idea is to get rid of this pickup completely, and this one gets rerouted. Now, this one here, you know, I've seen this before where it's wider on top and narrow on the bottom, but usually when it's wider on top like that, the pickup has three mounts instead of two mounts to it. And that's what this kind of reminds me of is that this is an older body. It's an older Epiphone Les Paul special. It's got the Gibson logo on the truss rod cover. So it's probably one of those ones that back in the day they used to use a three mount pickup. So that's why it's routed that way. But I don't want that. So I have to get rid of that, even them up. That's why I filled it. I could have left it, but no, I don't want to. Because I'm thinking about not putting a pickup ring around here. So I kind of want this to look as clean as possible. This one here, well, I just want to get rid of the fucker. I don't want it. I want to just, you know, blot it out completely. Now, this is not getting a veneer. So even though the way I'm sanding this down and everything else and taking a little bit more meat off of the body is not getting a veneer. This is going to get something else. And this one here, if I was, if I was going to do a thing where I was just going to paint this body, and or primer at first and then paint it um i would do a little bit more work before i filled in this pocket over here with the epoxy resin what i would have done is i would have took a small drill bit about the size of a toothpick and start going on an angle over here in all directions exception probably of this one here i'll probably have to put it shorter in either or cut off the other end on this side and i'd glue those toothpicks inside of here let that glue dry and then I do my pour as far as the epoxy goes to deep fill this thing up. Reason being, well you think of it this way, wood expands and contracts. That epoxy resin is not going to expand and contract. It, it's more of a solid than uh, dense material like wood is. 
doesn't have his pores in it like wood and everything else. So what's going to happen is, is the wood's going to move, but that epoxy resin is going to stay in one spot. And you're going to get cracking around the area. You'll, you'll end up showing up. So if you think of it more like pouring concrete and ended up uh, using rebarb to reinforce that concrete to keep it from cracking and everything else, just think of it that way. And that's what I would have done if I was just going to cover this up with paint. So this is going to hold off for now but i can show you what else i've got going on over here so here's the neck yes i know it's got a pointed headstock i wanted a different look from an epiphone les paul or the les paul uh in general so i went with a pointed headstock and this is um the right scale length the right heel width that fits this pocket. I did some measuring to make sure that this heel was going to fit this cutout, and it does. So it's got the little volute over here, which I don't mind that at all. And I'm going to keep the binding that's going around the edge of the neck. Now, this is going to get painted. This is not going to get stained. Um, so I am going to be using paint on this. And just to verify as far as like, you know, making sure that this neck fits this thing. There you go, she's in. The neck is a proper neck for the cutout. I did some measuring. The only thing that I had to do was kind of round off this edge a little bit on these corners to make it fit a little bit tighter up against inside this cutout here. That's it. That's the right way of doing this. If you were to sit there and have a lip on the bottom over here or have a lip from the neck, you don't have the right neck for that pocket. And then you're going to have to do some finagling around to get it to fit right. You can always remove wood, but you can't put wood back, so that's kind of a little bit of a hard thing to do. Well, actually, you could. You could end up gluing it, but then it'll show up. So, yeah. So right now, what I'm doing here is not much of anything. Uh, just kind of giving you guys an idea. Now, what I have going on the top of this is going to be a lot different than what I normally do. It is not going to be a veneer. There is no veneer going on the top. So I did take off a little bit more meat off the top of this body to make up the difference bef uh, between the neck height and what everything else is going to be as far as raising it up when I put my finish on here. And I can still go down a little bit more, which I will be because when I sand these guys down to make them flush, they'll end up being, you know, everything would be the way it's supposed to be. And I don't have to sit there and like have the pickups so far deep inside the body that, uh, you know, you can't even see them. But the whole idea of this is going to be this here. Now, I'm going to lose the Iron Maiden part over here. And I'm going to have to stretch it a little bit. i got to finagle this thing around to get it to fit on here a little bit. But I will lose the Iron Maiden part over here. I'll make sure that none of this shows up. you got one. Here's the neck pocket. you got one pickup here that's going to be solid. And you got the other pickup over here. So you might lose a little bit, but you'll get the idea of what's going to be on this guitar. And all this is is just a T-shirt. I bought a t-shirt just for cutting it up and putting it on a guitar. Ain't that special. And I am going to have to iron this because I do see some lines from when it was folded. And I don't want that to show up in a finish. So I'm going to have to kind of like stretch a little bit and pull a little bit in order for this to get to fit the way that I want to. I ended up doing is I screwed up and I cut too much off the bottom over here to make up the difference for the top. I didn't quite measure. See, even I screw up. But... I admit it, and I know how to fix it. So the deal is, is I watch how they do paisleys, and it's not really that hard of, of a thing to do. It's, it's more of a uh, mess than anything else when using epoxy. Roll out the epoxy on your surface. Uh, you can roll out some epoxy on the back of your material that you're putting it on here as well. Uh, lay out your material. Make sure that there is no bubbles or and everything is nice and flat, no wrinkles and shit. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up stretching this, stretching it out over the body a little bit and probably using something to hold it down as it's curing. And 
not a big deal. Uh, roll some epoxy on top of the material. That way it creates a, uh, a almost like a seal. And after that gets done, I can do a little bit of a rough sanding on it as long as I don't go through the seal coat and into the material, it'll be fine. And then do a epoxy pour on top of that. Cut out my, route out my pickup cavity, which this will already be cut out after, before I do that. And what I'm gonna end up doing is marking where these guys are. This way I don't lose them, even though I do have a template but I don't know how close the template is to this body as far as, because it's a large Les Paul style template. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. And uh, be on the lookout for more updates of what I'm gonna be doing and how I'm gonna be doing it. Because this is gonna be new for me, just like the veneering was. Uh, the reason why I did not wanna do the striping on this is number one, I didn't like the way it came out. And you know this is all gonna be taken off as well. I didn't like the way the striping came out, even though it may have looked good to you guys, I didn't care for it. And I might be doing more of these stripings in the future, and I don't want to fucking wear myself out as far as uh, making the striping veil old. Because when something starts getting old to you, you have less interest in that. And I don't want to kind of like just play it out so much that it's kind of like playing the same song on the radio over and over again. You just get wore out from it and you don't you know, care for the song anymore. So I want to keep this thing um, different. I also have a LTD coming that is going to get a complete makeover as well. And that one there, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with it. Um, I do have some other projects that are coming from other people so I am going to end up uh, yeah doing some work with that as well so right now I need to just let this thing sit for a bit longer before I can start getting into it. you guys take it easy have a good one and I will catch up with you all later